Hi guys, Mimi G here. Welcome back to my channel. So I am going to be doing a sew along for a much requested pattern, McCall's 7967. So I made this in a green and black polka dot dress uh, fabric and you guys loved it and asked for a sew along. So if you missed my prepping video where I talked about the sewing plan for this sew along, it's linked in the description box below for you guys if you wanna watch that, see what I was thinking as far as fabrics, what I ended up using. Um, and today we're gonna actually sew from beginning to end. So let's get started. All right guys, let's start this sew along. So if you watched the sewing prep video, um, you saw me go through the pieces that you needed, right? Front and back, you're going to need your sleeve and your cuff. I've already cut everything out. Um, for now, we're gonna start with the front and back. This is a super easy uh, pattern to sew up, um, which is one of my favorites <laughs> because um, it's just a quick, fun project to do. And you can make it out of so many different fabrics, so you have a lot of options. So you're gonna lay front to back, right sides are facing each other as usual. You're gonna pin down your entire side seam on both sides and we're gonna pin our shoulder. Now once you have it all pinned together, you're gonna do a straight stitch down both sides and across your shoulders. Okay, so if you've sewed your shoulders together and your side seams, before you go and serge your seams, this is a really good time to try this on. This is a really straightforward dress. So if you have your shoulders and your side seams sewn, you can try this on to make sure that it fits before you go ahead and attach your sleeves. So slip it on. If you need to take in more at the waist or at the bust or at the hips, just go ahead and do that now. After that, you're gonna go ahead and if you bought stabilizing tape, it's just that swimwear invisible tape I spoke about in the prep video, then you're just gonna cut it just shy of the length of your shoulder. I like to center mine over my stitching, and then I'm gonna go back to my sewing machine and I'm gonna stitch this following the, the stitching that's already on my shoulder. So let me show you that. So I'm gonna go ahead and place my tape, making sure that my stitching line that's on my shoulder seam is right in the center, and I'm just gonna stitch. Okay, so now when you go to your serger, you're just gonna go ahead and serge your seams like normal and it'll be a nice clean finish and this just adds more support to your shoulder. All right, so I went ahead, tried my dress on. I did end up taking a bit more um, at the waist. I went ahead, serged my seams. As you can see now, it's nicely finished uh, on both sides. Now, what we're gonna do before we attach our sleeves is we're going to create that little V. Now, if you don't want the V, right? Let's say you just want the U-neck then you're just gonna go ahead and serge around and then you're going to turn this over. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do my V and then serge my neckline before we finish it off. Now, I just wanted to point out that in the pattern instructions for this, they have you use a piece of elastic. Now you can use regular, let's say a quarter inch elastic. You could use even this swimwear elastic you could use if you wanted to. Um, what I like to do is I create two really narrow rows of gathering stitches, then I pull my gathering stitches so that it's nice and gathered, and then I secure it with elastic. I'm gonna tell you why. When I do this with elastic, um, sometimes you're not gonna get the amount of gathering that you want, right? It's only gonna gather so much. And so for me, I want the gathering here on my neckline to be prominent, and I want it to come as low as possible. So in order to do that, and to keep it stable, I do the two rows of stitching. Like I said, I'm gonna pull on those threads and I'm gonna, I'll walk you through it. And then we're gonna secure it with a little piece of elastic. That's just the way that I prefer to do it. Um, I did it when I first made my dress in that green and black polka dot. The first run at it, I did it the way the instructions in the pattern said. I didn't like um, how much gathering uh, was on my dress. I wanted a bit more. So I ripped it out and then started again with the two rows of gathering. And I just found it to be I don't know, it would look better to me. So um, feel free to do it however you want, but let's go ahead and right along the center front, you're gonna create two really narrow rows of gathering stitches. So I'm gonna do one and then I'm gonna do another, probably about two and a half inches long. So here's another tip. If you're gonna have a hard time looking at your center front while you're at your sewing machine, you can go ahead and make a mark line. So right at the center front, I'm just gonna make a line using my chalk roller. Now we're gonna start the gathering five eighths of an inch 
from the edge because remember we still need to turn in our allowance. So you're going to start five eighths below the top and then I guess probably about two and a half, three inches maybe and you're going to stop. Now what you're going to do is you're going to make a tiny row. You're going to make a row of gathering stitches on either side very close to the center front line. Okay, so starting five eighths of an inch down from the edge, I'm gonna go ahead and create my first row of gathering stitches. I'm gonna back stitch at the top, but not at the bottom. Okay, pull your stitches and cut. And then you're gonna go back and you're gonna do the same thing on the other side of your line. Now we have both rows of gathering stitches. Now we can go ahead and pull this to create our gathers. Okay, so now that we have our rows of gathering stitches, I'm just gonna grab the bottom ones and I'm gonna pull until I have the amount of gathering that you want and then go ahead and tie this off. So you're just gonna make a little knot. Now you can go ahead and grab another piece of elastic and you're just going to stitch right along the middle just to secure it in place. You don't need to stretch it, you don't need to pull, just cut it to the length of your gathering and you're just going to stitch right along the center just to stabilize your gathering stitches. Now once you have your elastic stitched in place just to stabilize, you'll have really nice even gathers on the front. Okay, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go over to your serger if you have one and you're gonna serge around your neckline. Then we're going to just simply turn in our allowance and stitch. All right guys, I went ahead and serged around my neckline. I pressed my seam allowance and then I went ahead and pinned it in place now. Some knits, depending on whatever you're working with, when you press it, it might stay. This knit does not stay very well, which is why I have also pinned my neckline in place. I wanna be able to have my stitching on the top. I don't wanna sew um, and have my bobbin thread on the top of my fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and pin it so that I could sew on my right side. So depending on how you did it, um, if you pressed it and it stays pressed, great, no need to pin. If it doesn't, then just go ahead and add some pins so that you can stitch on the right side of your fabric. All right, guys, once you stitch down your neckline, you can go ahead and give it a good press and then set it aside. We're gonna work on our sleeves. So what I want you to do is create two rows of gathering stitches across the top, the sleeve cap. Now, normally you have two dots that you should have marked and you're going to gather between your dots. I gather from notch to notch. The reason I do that, it gives me more control over the ease of the entire sleeve versus just this sleeve cap. And since we're gathering, it's just gonna make things a little bit easier. So I'm gonna start at my notch, I'm gonna stitch, back stitch, and then using my gathering stitch, whatever longest stitch you have on your machine, I'm gonna go all the way until I reach my other notch, and I'm gonna create two rows. You're gonna do that for both of your sleeves. Then you're going to also create your gathering stitches at the bottom of your sleeve because remember this is gathering onto our cuff. So for each sleeve, you're gonna do two rows of gathering stitches notch to notch. And starting at 5 eighths of an inch from each end at the bottom of your sleeve, you're gonna do the same thing, two rows of gathering stitches. Okay guys, so you can see that I did two rows of gathering stitches notch to notch. I also did my two rows of gathering stitches along the bottom of the sleeve. And now what you can do is using your cuff as a guide, you're gonna go ahead and pull the gathering stitches at the bottom. And then you can just sort of measure Okay, once they look about right, you're gonna go ahead and fold your cuff right sides facing. And you're going to stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. 
Once you have it stitched, you're gonna fold it in half and give it a press, just like this. And then go ahead and grab your sleeve and you're going to stitch your under seam together. Okay, so your underarm sleeve, you're going to stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. You're gonna do that for both of your sleeves and your cuffs. Okay, once you have the bottom sewn together and you have your cuff folded in half, we're gonna go ahead and pin these together. So first you're gonna match your underarm seam to the seam on your cuff. And with right sides facing, just go ahead and tuck your sleeve in there so that you're working with both of your raw edges. And you're gonna go ahead and pin. Make sure that those seam lines match up. You also have a notch, a notch that was on your sleeve and a notch that's on your cuff. You wanna match those up. If you need to pull on your gathers a little bit more to make it fit, you should do that now. But usually that little measuring flat trick uh, works pretty good, so. Okay, once you have your sleeve pinned to your cuff, you're just gonna go ahead to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch around using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. All right guys, once you have both your sleeves done, sleeve attached to your cuff, we're gonna go ahead and attach our sleeve to our dress. So first you're gonna make sure that you have your underarm seam and your side seam lined up and you're gonna pin there. And then what I'm gonna do before I gather my sleeve cap is I'm gonna pin and match my notches. So to make sure that you're attaching the front of your sleeve to the front of the dress, you should have one single notch. And then make sure that you have two notches for the back of the sleeve attaching to the back of your dress. Now once I have that, I'm gonna go ahead and start gathering my sleeve. Okay, then you're gonna find that shoulder seam and you're gonna line it up to your dot. And I'm gonna pin. And then this will just let me sort of even out those gathers where I want them. Now for a very poofy sleeve, you're gonna wanna have the concentration of your gathers right along the center of that sleeve cap if you sort of wanna distribute it a bit more than you would distribute it between your dots, but I want a really full sort of gathered cap. So I'm gonna try and concentrate most of my gathers around my shoulder seam. Once you have your gathers, go ahead and continue pinning. Okay, once you have everything in place, go ahead and stitch all the way around using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. You're gonna do your other sleeve the same way. Okay guys, once you have your sleeves sewn in, I went ahead and serged my seam allowance. The only thing left for you to do is to finish the hem of your skirt. So, whenever I'm sewing knits, if I'm, using, uh, if I'm sewing a vertical seam, then I just use a straight stitch. The only time I use a zigzag stitch is if I'm using it on a seam that I know is going to stretch across my body, right? So any vertical seams, I use straight stitch. Horizontal seams, I use a very, uh, zig a very narrow zigzag stitch. Or if your uh, sewing machine has it, you can use a lightning bolt, bolt stitch, which actually I prefer. It gives you even more stretchability than the zigzag stitch does. But if you don't have it, the narrow zigzag stitch will do just fine. So for example, on my hem, I've already pressed under my seam allowance um, and I went ahead and pinned it in place so I can stitch on the right side. And you're just gonna go ahead and stitch along your hemline using either a narrow zigzag stitch or like I said, a lightning bolt stitch and you are all done. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this so long. As always, if you're not following me on Instagram, please make sure and follow at Mimi G Style. If you need to learn to sew or need more help, join sewitacademy.com. Until next time, peace.